Ivan Van Ascot. It's a 72 plus event over the 1200 metres. And for mine, Mark, this is a competitive race, but there's two horses I really want to watch here, and it's Red Paddy and Max Almighty, two horses that do run on strongly. Yeah, indeed. We saw Red Paddy run on strongly for a nice second only a week ago. Let's have a look at that replay. Ready to go. It's it. Drove through on the inside of Woolly Bar. Down the outside is Agachar Cruz. Desi's Dreamer starting to weave clear. Red Paddy giving them six down the outside. Desi's Dreamer's raced up and hit the front. Agachar Cruz is trying to go with it, but Desi's Dreamer's broken clear. Red Paddy storms late, and so does Cuenza. Good performance on a day where you wanted to be leading. Now, they did go mad out in front, so Red Paddy did get that opportunity, but it was just too much ground to make up. Now, you see the step up to 1,200 metres. I think that's a big positive. You see Barrier 5, and then you see a 1.5 kilo claim to Aaron Mitchell as well. This horse has had seven attempts at the track and distance, two wins, four placings, only run outside the top three on one occasion. For mine, it's still the horse to beat because it's in really good form. And 5, Max Almighty, you mentioned, had a really nice campaign last uh, last preparation. And look, the first up run behind Man Booker was good, but uh, did have excuses as well and probably should have finished a bit closer. That's all you need to do is highlight Man Booker at the moment because we've seen what that horse has come out and done since this uh, Man Booker's back to the best. Barrier 8 here, Ellie Cockrum takes a ride with Patrick Carberry not engaged. I think this horse is the obvious threat to Red Paddy and with that turn of foot can certainly play a part. Number 8, Ripper Rio, as well as Change Stables now and is with Grant and Alana Williams. First up, I'm expecting it to run a nice race. All this horse screamed out to me was Falcon Crest. Just remember when horses go to Grant and Alana Williams and we've seen these colours before, how much they can improve as well. So Ripper Rio, we know he's got a really good record. He's already won 4 from 14. 54.5 kilos here. Jared Noski, the recent trial was good. First up form is good. Big watch on this galloper as well. So I'm intrigued to see how it does go for the new stable. But I can't go past number three, Red Paddy. From five, Max Almighty, one Gigante and eight, Ripper Rio. Number three on top for me, Red Paddy. From the stable, mate, Shady Grey, number 10. Finally draws a gate. Number eight, Ripper Rio and the one Gigante. Race number six at Ascot. It's the second of our enlisted events. It's the Sweeps Ascot 1000 Guineas over the 1800 metres. And I don't know where to look, Mark, because there's a fair bit of class in this race. And there's a couple of form lines to take a look at, but we do have a crack field of fillies lining up here. The key form race leading into this is the Challenge Stakes. Let's go have a look at Precious Memories winning that race. Girl in the straight, Verve de Viga led the way. Coming away from the inside now is Regazzo Doro. Wrinkley battling away, but Verve de Viga kick clear. Precious Memories is now beginning to hit overdrive, but Verve de Viga's clear. Gangbusters getting home well along the rail. Precious Memories coming at Verve de Viga. Gangbuster, they went to the line. Precious Memories. Classy performance there by Precious Memories, getting black time for the uh, connections there, and they said they've waited a 11 years for that to happen, so congratulations to them. Look, everything Precious Memories gets thrown at her, she's just able to adapt. This is the biggest question mark for mine though. 1800 metres against some horses that generally want that. She's just been winning on class at the moment. I'm not sure if she wants much further than 1600. So this will be the test to see how good she is. She's got a brilliant turn of foot. Jerry Noski's in great form. She can definitely win, but I do prefer others. Yeah, coming out of the same race, the challenge stakes is very tempting. Sean McGrady keeps the ride, which I really like. He knows the horse and the horse now knows him as well. Well, the run on effort was really good, does meet Precious Memories, one kilo better at the weights. And I just think that this filly by Reduce Choice has a lot more upside and will be better over further. Sean McGrady having great success at the moment for the Cerise and White, so it's certainly going to be a danger, but I'm just not sure where it rates it in the Cerise and White runners when you've got a horse like Royal Star, which is two from two, and Awaken as well, which I think is screaming out for the 1,800 metres. Look, I think it's going to improve as well. Has to be in the mix there. They've also got Glimmeriga as well. We know the Cerise and White have so many runners in these races, but I do actually prefer Royal Star and Awaken uh, out of, uh, if you're comparing them with, very tempting. Yeah, oh, look, very tempting, has the challenge listed form lines and was probably the best performed galloper of that lot but we've also got in the race there number seven royal star the one you mentioned adam Barrier 13 for Jared Noski. He'll need luck. Great opportunity for Jared, as you mentioned. The barrier makes it a bit tough, but in these uh, 1,800 metres event for the three-year-olds, the biggest test is can the horses stay? We know that, well, I think we know that this horse is going to get the job done here and be able to run out the distance. So just needs a little bit of luck through those early stages. Can certainly run a really nice race. Adam, on top for you. I'm going to go with number seven, Royal Star. From four, just like five, we know that this filly's got so much class. Number 12, Awaken, and one, Precious Memories. Number five goes on top for me. Very tempting from the one, Precious Memories. Four, Just Like Fire, and ten, Amalfi Lass. Race number seven at Ascot, it's over the 1,400 metres, and again, an intriguing race, Martin. There's horses that are knocking on the door, like Tangier, Jintang, and Card Knight. And then there's horses that are probably in career best form, like Zafiro, which, you know, still very green, but find ways to win. So it's an exciting race. Yeah, Zafiro, of course, only won his maiden back on Boxing Day last year. So they've come a long way in a short period of time. Let's have a look at him beating Dusha Zakitsky last start. Rail came Klondike, Kenny at the head of the others, was... Uh... 
Zafiro, followed further back by Scoreline Massachusetts and Bergio. But Dusha Zachetsky had hit the front at the 150 metre mark. Kicking back on the inside, Klondike Kenny. Down the outside, Scoreline Zafiro coming in the middle. Dusha Zachetsky, Zafiro lunged at it. This horse is a very big, gross, probably dumb animal as well, if you want to summarise, and I think Connections have said that as well. He just sort of looms up, looks as though he's going to win comfortably, sees the front, backs off a bit, and then decides to run on. But the, the thing is that this horse is winning. One three of its past five, such a big animal as well. I think the 1,400 metres is ideal here. Jason Whiting understands this galloper. He's riding really well, and there's going to be good speed in the race, which I think is exactly what he needs. Yeah, Jason Whiting knows exactly how to ride this gelding by Von Costa de Hero. We've also got in the race number 510, I dare say if it had drawn a lid last start, it would have nearly won. Yeah, I think this horse probably should have won the last two starts. So it was on the inside against Maginica when coming from well back on a leader's day. Then last start was beaten by a point and as you said, had to jump from a wide gate there as barrier 15. Now Chris Parnham suspended, so Fiona Bell gets a ride, which means the three kilo claim. Carries 55, the horse can certainly win. Number eight, Card Knight, comes out of that Galaxy Star race. Now it was... Copped a bit of backwash uh, after Galaxy Star hit Key to Fame and Key to Fame bumped onto Card Knight. This horse has been running really well, this preparation, but again, drawn a bit sticky. Just needs some luck, and uh, as you said, the wide gate is certainly going to hurt, but this horse is in good form, and if it can get into a nice position, maybe that three wide running line can attack the line strongly and play a part. But I'm going to go with five Tangier. The three kilo claim should help. From eight, Card Knight, four Zafiro, and one all too much. Number four on top for me, Zafiro, to continue his good run of form. From number eight, Card Knight, five Tangier, and 13, Dusha Zikiti. Final race of the day at Ascot is a 72 plus event over the 1600 metres and I think uh, like we've seen in recent weeks, very tough leg to finish on in the quaddy because it's a bit of a raffle. Yeah, it really is Adam, but we'll have a look at the race from Corporate Larrikin winning, Material Man running third. The home straight, Corporate Larrikin led the way, here comes Maginica throwing down the gauntlet, Settlers Creek back near the fence, infatuated, battling away, Corporate Larrikin giving back as a great sight though, he kicks again, Corporate Larrikin, he's beaten off Maginica, Corporate Larrikin in front and it's Corporate Larrikin all the way. Again Beat this Maginica. was a leader's day in Ascot so it was no surprise to see Corporate Larrikin get the job done but I was really impressed with the run by Material Man, was only beaten 1.8 lengths, that was first up. This horse has won second up before. Peter Hall takes the ride as well. There's good speed in this with it. In fact, you waited and Barricky beats in the race as well. So I think it's going to set up perfectly for a material man. I can definitely see it winning. A couple of Durant and Miller runners return as well. Pins off about a month freshen up and Sasso Circus off a three week freshen up. Sasso Circus, his record over the track and distance is unbelievable, but Sean O'Donnell has to contend with barrier 14 here. Yeah, 72 plus events, a big bonus here for uh, Sasso Circus. The barrier going to be the key part because we know this horse has only got a short sprint so it just needs to be led into the race nicing and let down. I don't know if you're over Pinzu after that tough run last start where it was narrowly beaten by Sasso Circus after being wide throughout. But what we learnt was that this horse has plenty of heart to be able to do that. Barrier 16 makes it tough. Jared Noski gets his chance there. Number five, Settlers Creek. He's been up for a very, very long time. We've got infatuated in this race. And when infatuated was finishing his campaign last time, how he beat uh, Settlers Creek, who was just starting. Been up for a long time. Yeah, certainly has. But you have to keep going, don't you, with the way that we've seen this horse running. Just continue to get checks. Barrier one here will be able to just uh, sit behind them. Need a little bit of luck at the top of the straight. I think, again, it's certainly a winning chance in an open race. But I'm going to go with Material Man from Settlers Creek. Number four, Pinzu, and one infatuated. I've got number eight on top here, Sasso Circus from the four Pinzu, two Material Man and 14 Proxy. Time now to take a look at the best bets of the card and I'm going to go with race two, number two, Galaxy Star and race five, number three, Red Paddy. I'm going with race two, number two, Galaxy Star as well and race four, number seven, See any. As we always say, follow us on social media. You can see it on screen there and also YouTube. PerthRacing.com.au. Plenty of events coming up. Really exciting time for the two-year-olds and three-year-olds as well. So make sure you book your tickets for the race days. On behalf of both of us, hopefully we found you plenty of winners.